Utah, give me two. Hey guys, the Custa, the Machine and Krieger competition is absolutely exploding. So many of you have entered and they're really excited about it. Thank you very much. For details on that, just pop over to my blog, paintonplastic.com. This kit is a really good one, both for the competition and for your collection. The last time it came out was maybe seven years ago or so for a basic coat. And uh, it's available for you now. Now you don't have to buy the one that's propping up some dude's couch. You can get it now from Japanese retail. Uh, on my blog, check out how to buy MAK and there'll be a, a description there. But I'll also put a link in the comments uh, and the uh, description for this video for you to go and buy one directly. Now, let's pop one open and show you what's inside. Okay, let's check it out. Now, a quick historical moment. It's actually four years uh, I've been on YouTube now. Yay! And, and thank you very much. It's been so cool to meet and uh, find so many friends here. Now, the first video we did was uh, together with my wife uh, holding the camera and it was uh, opening up a uh, ammo night. So uh, we're doing that again. And it's actually a lot of fun for us to work together like this. So anyway, Custa, let's do this. Quick look around the box. Now this is the classic tan box as envisaged by, there it is, Kunitaki Yamai-san. Uh, sadly, Yamai-san is no longer with us, but uh, he was one of the three people that originally kicked off Machine and Krieger, along with, of course, Koyoku Yama-sensei and uh, Ichimura-san, oh, almost forgot, Ichimura-san. Um, he's the owner of, uh, of Model Graphics Artbox. And uh, I felt, I went, oh, because I've worked with him a bunch of times and it would be really embarrassing, but I think he's not watching YouTube. So, uh, Yokama-san and Imai-san had the idea, they had kicked around, they'd seen the picture of the wrapping paper that the, uh, the Soviet Union used to use for the AK-47 assault rifles when they were placed uh, in long storage. Yokama-san likes to tell the story of um, they saw people digging them up on the beach and uh, it was, uh, when it's new and before it's uh, oiled, it's a, uh, a tan color. That's where the tan comes from. And this is probably the first time it's been spoken about in English because, I mean, it's not even spoken about in Japanese. I just asked the question because I really like them. So there's that. How much value does Link give? You know, that's why I'm the ambassador. I'm bringing all this cool stuff from Japan for you, my friends. Alrighty, the back of the box. Now, this is an expensive release for Wave because it's printed on all sides. Um, yes, that's a really big deal. It's got a nice English blurb as well. And I love that they've kept the font from the old days. See how it's got the slight, um, the inconsistency with the ink to look like they've gone back to using mechanical typewriters. Of course, back in the day when these were new, that's all they had, but it's just a really cool reference. Really liking this, this color too. Very, very cool. I like how they've kept this too. You know the old dotted line from the, the paint cards? It reminds me of that cool stuff from the 80s. Remember we used to get it on cereal boxes back when we were allowed to eat cereal? And, uh, you know, cut this out to keep it for your collection kind of vibe. It's so nifty. One of the other things to look out for is they'll often have uh, cool... The icons, the icons are either brought back. I've got to be honest, so I was, <laughs> I often worked on the team pouring through older books to get icons. I don't remember if this is a classic or not. I remember the toad, of course, where are we? Oh, and the devil guy. Yeah, 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 so that's a, that's a classic Stral icon there. Okay, crack the box. Mm. You got to capture this for unboxing videos, haven't you? That, that creaky, there it is. Actually, it was much less impressive than I had thought. Here we go. Now, this guy is a classic. Now, these are Nitto molds. Just having a look, I can't see. These might be new, but the rest, just eyeballing it, looks like the old original uh, Nitto classics. Here is Smoking Man. Now, Yokama san and I would laugh about this one because it even has a... Can we get it? It even has like a little 120 scale cigarette and uh, the smoking hand and everything. Now, I'm gonna do a shout out. Can someone update Smoking Man to be Vape Man? That would just be really cool and hilarious. I'll pop these out of the bags just for a quick, for a closer look and get rid of some of that shine. But before I do it, I wanna give a shout out to my mate Finbar because he loves that crinkle. Okay, now that I've got the plastic out of the bags, I can see that it's a beautiful, dark 
uh, industrial green. Uh, it's a beautiful militarized type color. I think it looks really cool. Now, the video camera probably, and you know, YouTube's only 1080. Uh, I don't want to bump it up to the 4K because I know you are watching on your mobile phones. The, uh, the detail on these for an 80s kit, so all of the sprues, I just had a quick look over, they're all original Nito. So, you know, they were done back in the early half of the 80s. So the detail is just incredible. It's a little bit like a cheap time machine to be able to build these kits. My buddy Pablo, hey Pablo, was, uh, he's a really good armor modeler who um, we have kind of, man, now is not the right timing to use the word infected, is it? Oh, I was thinking of, we have, uh, we have brought him over to our cult of Machine Krieger and he's really, really, you know, jumping into the look. It's really, really good stuff. He mentioned to me that he's amazed at the, the quality of the, uh, the details on this. Now he's a young guy. He's only been building new modern armor kits. So Nito, even back in the eighties, man, they were really knocking it out of the park. Now, looking through the details here, I can see that it is a basic crete, uh, which translates as toad. So as long, uh, along with the basic crete that we can make, and I apologize for my pronunciation because I have to have three versions running in my head. When I speak with my English speaking friends, they all say crote. My Japanese friends and talking with my teacher, they say crete. And then my German friends, who probably say it a little bit more correctly than others, will say Kruita. Sounds like that to me. So choose one of them. So here's the regular one, regular release, uh, quote. So that, that we could make that one too. Yep, and the legs. I've got to tell you, every time I make one of these legged versions, despite the fact that I put the legs on backwards and wrong and it can't mechanically walk, I don't care because it's really, really cool. But they are tough to build. If you're coming from Gumpla, uh, just take this part slowly because it's a bit, you know, ugh, and the instructions are not the clearest. So, but you can do it. I have faith in you. I have confidence in you. And I will help you with uh, tips, hacks, etc., and so on. Now, these are the extra Custer parts. So this includes the infrared. Um, for those of you who are really into military technology, they can use an infrared lamp. And then if you're using night vision goggles, it uh, lights up the battlefield like a, um, like a searchlight in, in normal, the normal spectrum. However, it also, if anybody else is using night vision goggles, they will instantly see you. So it's that kind of thing. But it comes with a bunch of extra details. We don't have to use them on this kit, but it's cool if we do. Smoke launchers and uh, the IR gear. Oh, so this has a new part. This one on the regular Kurt kit goes on the back of the engine and it's a real pain in the bum to figure out how it fits. So I'm looking forward to testing this out because I've not made this Custer version before. So this will also be an exciting experiment for me. Uh, and this one was, was an upgrade kit that they offered too. It has the extra hip and knee armor. I think it's also got the parts. Yeah, there they are. So these parts help with making the legs uh, able to slightly splay. If you'd made the old, old Nito kits, they just went straight like that, you know, to the camera, straight. And uh, when wa walkers need to have the feet slightly splayed to look a little more natural. Yeah, I know it's a robot, but you know, that's what we humans do. We try to make it all work like people. Rest of the contents we've got, now this is what really set them apart back in the day was the multimedia they included. And I mean, even today, what, what companies include this much stuff? Maybe Eduardo? Uh, it's just such a nice touch. So these are copper, copper, uh, they're not wire, are they? They're rods for easy bending to make into the, uh, you know, the grab handles and uh, the, the protective bars that go around some of the engine parts, etc. Cabling is included. Um, springs, if you want to replace the plastic parts on the legs. And um, these parts, like the hydraulic, uh, springs. And that's why you'll see a lot of people replace different things on their machine and Krieger kit with springs because uh, they just look really cool. They've got that metallic heavy weight because they're metallic, they, they're real. What I really like about these parts is that they're, f is the correct English word fluted? Help me out guys. But see how they've got that wonderful shape. So that just inserts in one end. You kind of can't get them wrong. That is so nifty and helpful. Now the instructions, yep, clear part. Now this is for making the regular crete, the regular crote. You could use that in the searchlight. 
instructions. <laughs> now, for those of you who remember the Nito ones, oh, they, they were more like hieroglyphics that kind of gave notions of the kit. They weren't too good. These are really nice and easy to follow. Yep, really good. Oh, man. Okay, sold. Sold to the sexy crete on the bottom. Kista. That's the one. I'm making that one. Uh, my friends will ask me, how do you come up with the paint schemes, Lincoln? The first one that makes me excited. <laughs> it's really that simple. But, but dude, Splinter's looking pretty good as well. This one would be nice. It would match up with the Friedrich one if you wanted to make them, you know, the Canon versions. Man, these are, the rest of it is a free kit. This is so cool. Decal placement, a uh, little bit of unit background information. Now, Here's a word to the wise. Many friends will ask me, they'll reach out, hey Link, the background seems a little thin. Yes, that's by design. We would write these things as start points for fans and it's meant to get you, give you the vibe, the feeling of the thing so that you could then go on and make up your own, so that you could own your own Machine Krieger universe as well. So please follow these if you want. I, I like doing it. It's just, I, I, I really like it. It, I, it appeals to me. Uh, plus the color coordination between the water slides and everything. We went to a lot of lengths to plan that out. So I still love doing that, but feel free to make up your own, mix and match them. It's all good. Cool. Now water slides. What you'll probably notice is once you start getting a better eye for your colors, I will confess without word of a lie, I learned much of my color coordination from working with Machine and Krieger water slides. Look at the beautiful orange yellow, the darker red, uh, they're all so well put together that once you start making your own color schemes or even just practicing the Canon ones that come in the box, you'll learn a lot about colors. It's really cool. And there it is, the classic toad. I don't know if we've had the matching toad heart before. That's pretty nifty. Uh, the old toad stool, we've still got that. Devil man, we're cool. Oh, we've got two kinds of devil mans, right? Two flavors. Um, the eyes are really nifty. I think I used these ones on another one before, but what is catching my eye here is the uh, the hand-drawn ones. I mean, how nifty does that one look? The the pair of hand-drawn eyes to make it look like the crew has uh, you know whipped out a paintbrush and uh, uh, maybe as a gag. Who knows? You know, a bunch of people joking around, going, <laughs> "I'm going to put eyes on it." That's really cool. Yeah, really nifty. Man, that's a beautiful orange yellow, isn't it? Yes, I'm really liking this. Okay, that's what we get. Uh, I will, I will move on and make something up like this soonish. Man, I've got a lot on my plate right now, uh, but that's what we get in the box. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll put some higher res photos for you soon on my website, paintonplastic.com, uh, including some photographs of the previous creator that I've made, the snow camo version. Uh, so like and subscribe, do all those nifty youtube -y things. And um, a big shout out and thank you to the wonderful Paint On Plastic Patreon community who support uh, my work and uh, bringing you these videos. Thanks very much, guys. More soon. See ya.